Hello, hello, and welcome to day 13 of this Unity Game Development Journal. So, today was actually a pretty uh, uh, busy day. Um, you know, I am coding this game part-time. I have a full-time job. I run uh, two companies during the day, an architectural firm and then a sort of a software education firm. Um, and this is sort of a side project, but man, I, I put a lot of time in after work today and I got a lot of really cool stuff done today. So let's just talk about what I did. Um, got the, uh, got the sprites for the side view of lifting things and walking with them. So it's pretty much a mimic from the left to the right. So I just copied it down, flipped everything and aligned it. Um, but yeah, that's a lot of sprite. It actually, it felt like it was taking forever when I was doing it. It took a few hours. It was a big chunk of time. And I thought, man, I'm not going to be able to do anything else today, just these animations. But uh, nonetheless, I got that done. Plus, I got a whole bunch of other stuff done. So let me show you what I did. Um, into Unity. I went through and I reorganized how some, like some of the static classes for the scenes. I wanted to be able to access things a little bit more easily or go in and test different scenes individually. So I wanted to make sure that was done. Then I worked on a, a pretty advanced save system, in my opinion. Most of the stuff out there when you're talking about saving game data, it's pretty basic, like, oh, you can save um, the user's position, which mine does, but it also does a lot more. Uh, for instance, it saves multiple save games into a list, and when you load the game, you can choose which uh, version of your save you want to play, which a lot of games do nowadays, like pretty much that's a common feature. But it's not that easy to implement, and a lot of tutorials and instruction and education sites don't actually talk about it. So it's pretty neat that I actually was able to get it to work. So let's just dive in here and show you what I've done. And the save system is uh, it's going to be really, really cool on how easy it's going to do be to do like save points and checkpoints. So I'll show you that. Um, essentially, the menu screen, I just revamped it. I started working a little bit with the GUI system, the UI system, and Unity. Um, essentially, I just put some texture and a button for a new game. And then there is a section here for all a list of all the saved games. So you could save as many different versions of the game as you want. So you could take different paths through the story or, you know, talk to different people or, or do different things, you know. Depending on how the game is going to play out, there's going to be uh, an ability to save a lot of different versions of your game. So um, we'll just click New Game here. There's nothing showing up here, but New Game is going to instantiate uh, a player as well as some stats for them including uh, HP, health, um, things like that as well as a uh, player location and cutscene data what the what cutscene scenes they've seen and it's also going to set what actual scene we were last in okay so that's all happening when you click new game and it shoots us near this this looks nothing uh, like really no different but the thing is the player position is now being selected from a default uh, data point instead of me just slapping the character onto the map so that's sort of uh, a little bit more um, properly done a little bit uh, a little bit better. So anyways, here we got the moving around, we got the cutscene, I'm going to go and complete that. And then, like I said before, we had these signs here. And the signs, when I hit the action key, I still don't have anything pop up, but in the console we can see that it's going to say saved. So um, I'll click here, and now we have uh, the call to save game. Perfect. Um, so that's that. I'm going to just go out of here and show you a couple things. So we've already been through the cutscene and we've already saved the game. So I'm going to go in here and we should see a new save here. This is just listing the scene name called game scene. I only have one scene, so all these saves are going to be the same, uh, same title, but whatever, I can change that later on to be more descriptive. We also have a delete button here so I can actually delete that save. But for now, let's just go back in. And we'll see, I appear back at that location that I say last saved, that was a checkpoint. And this um, is no longer um, a cutscene, it's, it's vanished because I've already completed it and I kept track that I completed it so it knows when I get to that point in the game, it says, no, you've already done it, you don't have to go again. So we do have a second point there, but um, yeah, I'll, I'll use, I'll go to that right now. So I'll just save that, uh, it says call to save game there, so that's all good. Let's go back in and we'll do a couple things. We'll create a new game. So I'm back at here and the cutscene will be active again. 
and I'll just go and save up here real quick. Boom, saved game. I'll exit out here and back in. So now we have the two. The first one will be the far left um, point. That was This was the very first game we played and I saved it to the far left, I'm pretty sure. So we're back over here. Excellent. And this one um, is the other one, but I'm gonna show you the delete. So I'm just going to go ahead and delete this one. That's the far left one. So I'll delete that, it's deleted, and if I go back into this one, this is this game save. So all that functionality is now working. Now it's pretty plain Jane, this should be in every single game, but it's sort of neat to have that actually actually done. Now I'm gonna show you how easy it is to just simply add a, another save point to the game. So I'm gonna go into the game scene, well, game scene, and I'm just going to go down to my save points here, and I'm just gonna clone uh, or duplicate one of these. Now there's, this should probably be a more, um, uh, a prefab designed specifically for checkpoints, but I'm just using this save sign now for for argument's sake. So anyways, I have that. I'm, I don't know why I'm dragging it, but I'll just go and move it to somewhere else. So we'll say, let's have a save point back here. Okay, so I just place it there. So now we have three on the map, so I can play the game. Uh, actually, let's play the game back from the main menu here. So we can get the whole new game aspect in the all that kind of stuff, okay. So I'm just gonna go back into the, the saved game here. And now I have um, this sign here. So if I interact with that sign, it said saved. Go back out, come back in and click that saved game again. And we should be at the new checkpoint. So that's how easy it is to add checkpoints in the map. It's designed in a way that you just sort of plop this thing down on the map and you can put those anywhere you want in the game. And as soon as the player interacts with it, it saves all the data to a file, a uh, binary uh, formatted file, and boom, you got save data. So really, really fun. Um, I'm really glad that that's done. Uh, another thing I'll bring up is I have my uh, uh, controllers folder, so all my controllers are here, all my models are here, uh, my game model, which is my overall wrapper for the data for the whole game, and then I break it out, so now I have a player model that keeps track of the player stuff. And when I'm saving or updating things, then it takes any player data and moves it over to the game model and then serializes everything and, and saves it. So that's how that sort of works. So that's the models. This will be broken out to other types of models besides player model or player data. So that's where that's going to go. And then the last folder I have is views, which I created today to do the menu view. So all the GUI stuff and all the stuff for the view is broken into that for that menu. So as I build this game out, I'm going to start organizing into these three folders. And there's going to be a few other folders. I'm going to get rid of a lot of this stuff here. Um, just organizing the project, there's going to be things for, like right now I, I'm going to have databases. Um, and inputs is probably going to be another one. It, maybe not. I'm not 100% sure on that. Uh, and then, yeah, there's going to be a few extra folders besides model view and controller, but essentially I want the project to be really streamlined in the organization architecture side of things too. So thanks for watching. And I'm really happy with the stuff that, I, that got done today. It's a late day. It's already like 12, 15. So, um, yeah, thanks for watching and we'll talk to you later.